Now, Pakistan says it shot down two Indian fighter jets while they were in Pakistani airspace. They've arrested one Indian pilot and another is apparently in the hospital receiving treatment. But India says only one of its aircraft crashed and that was because of technical failure. Now, Pakistan has closed its airspace to all commercial traffic and it's also closed over Indian-administered Kashmir. Now, as tensions reach dangerous levels, Pakistan's military insists it doesn't want a war with India. The government of Pakistan, the armed forces of Pakistan, and the people of Pakistan, we have always conveyed a message of peace to India. And the route to peace goes through dialogue. Both countries have the capability and capacity, but war is actually the failure of policy which India needs to understand. Well, India and Pakistan have also been exchanging fire across the line of control. India says five of its soldiers have been injured. And Pakistan's police say six civilians have been killed by Indian mortar shells in Pakistani-administered Kashmir. On Tuesday, India's military said it carried out airstrikes close to the border of Pakistan and Pakistan-administered Kashmir in response to a suicide bomb attack that had killed at least 40 Indian soldiers on the 14th of February. All right, we'll speak to Fez Jamil, our correspondent in New Delhi, in a little bit. First of all, though, let's go to our correspondent, Imran Khan. He's in the Pakistan capital, Islamabad. Uh, so the news then, Imran, that uh, Pakistan has closed its airspace to all commercial flights uh, is a serious escalation in terms of the, the state of emergency that is being experienced by parts of the country. That's absolutely right. The shutting down of the airspace to civilian traffic is, is serious, but it's also standard operating procedure when tensions are at this sort of level. Now, what we're hearing from uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Army are very strong statements when it comes to the downing of the Indian aircraft. Now, the Army and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs insist that two uh, fighter jets were downed and one pilot has been arrested and two were killed. Now, in the last hour, we've seen uh, footage been released by the Pakistani army of uh, the downed aircraft plus uh, pictures of uh, the captured pilot himself. So the Pakistanis are saying that we have this man in custody. This did happen. However, the Indians seem to be uh, playing this down, saying that the aircraft actually crashed and they're not giving as much information as the Pakistanis. Now, if you watch the Pakistani media here, this is uh, being seen as a very serious ratcheting up of tensions. The last time Pakistan uh, downed a pilot was uh, nearly a decade ago. Uh, so it's been a very long time since escalations have been at the attentions have been at this sort of level. Where it goes from here is going to be key. Whether it becomes a diplomatic thing or whether it, was, it becomes a military thing remains to be seen. All right, Imran, thank you for that. Imran Khan there, our correspondent in Islamabad. Now to Fez Jamil in New Delhi. And Fez, uh, we understand that there are, there are two competing narratives here. There is the one coming from the Pakistanis and there is that uh, coming from the Indians. What are the Indians saying about it all? Martine, they're not saying much. They're being very tight-lipped and really not confirming anything. The only confirmation we have is that airspace has been shut over Indian-administered Kashmir. What we are getting, though, is from locals on the ground. And, Martine, something we just learned in the last few minutes is that some of the major hospitals in Srinagar, they're going on the roofs, the people, the officials of the hospital, and they're painting the Red Cross logo on the top of the roofs. There's a lot of fear that shows that there could be more attacks, there could be even an airstrike. So they're doing whatever they can to protect themselves, even resorting to a measure like that. As far as everything else coming out, we're hearing locals on the ground telling us in Rajouri and Poonch districts near the border with Pakistan that they saw an aircraft drop bombs and later saw another unidentified aircraft crash. Now, because no confirmation has come from Indian officials, we don't know whose plane that was or uh, who was on it or how many people were on it, if it did happen. The only confirmed we have from local officials is an air crash outside the capital, Srinagar, where two charred bodies were found. But again, we're not sure if it was a jet fighter or a helicopter. Now, as we heard from Imran, yes, tensions have escalated, and India was trying to avoid this very situation. 
In their rhetoric after the Indian airstrikes on Tuesday, they said that they weren't targeting any Pakistani military or civilians, and this was a preemptive strike because armed groups were planning another suicide attack. But as we've seen from today, those efforts were in vain. All right. Fez Jamil, our correspondent in New Delhi, thank you very much indeed. Now we can speak to Uday Bashka, a retired Commodore in the Indian Navy and director of the Society for Policy Studies. He's uh, also joining us from the Indian capital, New Delhi. Thank you uh, for talking to us again. Um, this uh, situation, this scenario we're witnessing right now has all the potential, doesn't it, to escalate into full-scale conflict? I'm afraid the short answer is yes, because if we review what happened over the last few hours and the kind of uh, perception that has been conveyed from one side to the other, particularly through social media, it has all the elements of going up the escalation ladder because there are reports about aircraft being shot down. And furthermore, it appears that there are military preparations going on if social media is to be believed, which is a big question mark. But I think the short point is, yes, there is escalation on the cards, and we have to see how the political management on both sides, the political leadership, is going to manage this particular situation. Do, do, you, think that, do you think that there is room uh, in this uh, rather tense uh, situation, there is room for political miscalculation, which could almost inadvertently tip the situation into all-out conflict? Because both sides are saying that they don't want war. You know, I would say that, yes, there is a possibility that there could be a wrong call in terms of how both sides see the situation. But at the same time, I would say what is encouraging, and this is literally over the last one hour, that there are fairly firm statements coming out, I think, from both sides, suggesting that they do not want to escalate, that both sides want to review whatever has happened till now, and I think then to get on top of the story, because if you just remember what happened between yesterday and today after the Indian strike on Balakot, the first Pakistani response was to reject it and say nothing had happened. Then Prime Minister Imran Khan said the foreign media would be taken to Balakot so that the reality on the ground could be established. From then to now, we've had these reports about the aircraft having been shot down. So I think the statements that have just come out over the last one hour is we do not want to escalate. Perhaps both sides want to put out their own stories and then see whether or not there could be a window that is open for some kind of a political dialogue. Absolutely. In, in a situation like this, of course, uh, there is a great deal of pressure, isn't there? Domestic pressure on, on, on each side, on, on the leadership of each side. And each side has to be seen to be acting in a firm and decisive way. I mean, how much pressure would you say uh, is uh, Prime Minister Modi on? Uh, we've obviously got to mention the fact that we're in the run-up to elections, which must add a particular dimension to this uh, current scenario. I would say that there is considerable pressure on both prime ministers, Prime Minister Modi in India, to make the appropriate response after the Pulwama terror attack, which the Pakistani group had claimed. And concurrently, there is pressure, to my mind, on Prime Minister Imran Khan, who is a relatively new prime minister, to prove his mettle that he can lead his country in a moment like this. So this, I think, is being exacerbated by social media, by television, and by the speed with which information is being conveyed from one side to the other. And there is a lot of what you might call as the nationalist fervor that we see in any country when there is any kind of a military threat to national security. And that is where I think we need more prudent kind of both political, I would say, leadership and a certain degree, if I may take the liberty of saying on Al Jazeera, some kind of prudent reporting of what is happening so that inadvertently what is being put out in terms of the narrative is neither endorsed nor in a corrosive way taken forward so that existing nationalist passions do not get inflamed further. But then I'm an analyst, so I can say all this. Of course. Martin. Thank you very much. Uday Bashkar talking to us live from the Indian capital, New Delhi. Thank you.